Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to join this session. How about the lunch today? <laughs> so I, I think we can get started because we have limited minutes. And welcome to join this session about uh, the rolling upgrade of Intel private cloud. And uh, um, my name is Shu Quan Huan and I'm based in Shanghai. I'm leading a team in Shanghai to build an Intel private cloud, providing cloud services within Intel. And uh, standing beside me is Ling Tan. Yes, uh, my name is Ling Tan. I'm also based in Shanghai, China. I work for Intel uh, OTC. He is an active uh, Ironic project developer. So uh, today we will present you the, our experience on up rolling upgrade from Havana to Ice House. Just before this presentation, I want to do a quick survey. Can you raise your hands if you uh, use OpenStack as your production environment? Great. And uh, who are planning for upgrade for this environment? Oh. And who have finished a successful upgrade? in production. Nice. <laughs> OK. So um, today, first of all, of all I will uh, introduce you into our private cloud. What, what's the private cloud, and what kind of services we provide, and what module we use in OpenStack. And then I will uh, talk about the uh, strategy and consideration behind this upgrade, and then I will walk you to the um, rolling upgrade road, which contain the um, roadmap plan, validation plan, and some automation tools uh, in, uh, behind this upgrade. At last, I will show you the uh, result of our upgrade and our feedback to the community. We, uh, a long time ago, we have already developed a homegrown cloud framework to manage uh, ESSI as a hybridizer before OpenStack comes out. So uh, we have an uh, existing cloud environment. There are many users use them. So we integrate our environment with OpenStack, how to leverage OpenStack to help us to switch our hypervisor from ESS to uh, KVM, and leverage OpenStack to help to reduce the event uh, locking and manage um, KVM uh, hypervisor. Since 2012, we started to investigate, and finally, we integrate OpenStack. We develop a driver inside our cloud framework VM provisioning module, and use this driver to talk with OpenStack cluster. And just as I say, so we we do not use uh, Horizon in OpenStack. We still use our uh, portal, our existing portal. So we only use the Nova, Glance, Keystone, Cinder, Neutron, this project. And this project is the, uh, the we are going to upgrade them from Havana to Ice House. And what's the architecture and topology of our OpenStack cloud? We implement the high availability of our uh, OpenStack control APIs. And as you see, we have two controllers and two low best nodes. And the, uh, all the requests come through the public VIP and low balance to different uh, controller. And then within this cluster, we have uh, the MySQL cluster and the RabMQ cluster. From the uh, storage side, we are using multiple layer storage, including Ceph cluster. We have a Ceph cluster providing block uh, storage. And at the same time, we also use the uh, local storage with uh, SSD to provide, provide high performance storage to our user. And in the compute nodes, we have separate, uh, we divide them into different host aggregates. So uh, we can schedule different VMs to different uh, host aggregate to fulfill our customers' requirements. And from the network perspective, 
we are uh, because the limitation of uh, neutron LV agent in Havana, so we are not heavily uh, rely on the um, neutron L3 agent. We are using the uh, we are using the VLAN in neutron, so we use the physical uh, switch to help us route the data outside to the pub network. But we do have the uh, neutron L3 running in our network node, but it just for some um, experiment, uh, some testing or some uh, small scale usage. From in the uh, left diagram, you can see we are have used the puppy to deploy this cluster from scratch. We uh, have our local code repository. We have our local pipe package and local uh, uh, repository. We use puppy to um, get this package and load it to uh, specific nodes and deploy it with puppy. And also, you can see we use log stash to aggregate all the logs in the node to a centralized place and use Elasticsearch to search all the logs. And based on the API of Elasticsearch, we also develop a, a, the a auto error log detector system, which this system will uh, help us uh, detect the error logs in the whole cluster and send out the notification to the operators. And in the uh, last two items, we use the uh, Schenken to send, get alert and set mail, and use Ganglia to collect some metrics. So uh, this, this our production environment already running about one year. So we, why we decide to upgrade the existing cluster, I think there are two major reasons here, because with the business growth, we found the old version uh, is cannot fulfill our requirement. It has a lot. It has some bugs, which blocks us with the customer. And we also want some uh, new feature, but this cluster cannot fulfill us. And we leverage different uh, choices. For example, we can merge some uh, patch into this branch and uh, upgrade it to the cluster, but that costs a lot of effort. So we decide to directly update, upgrade this cluster from a version by version. And another thing is Havana is, can, do not support it by community, so we decide to go to another version. Made a decision then how to perform this upgrade. We don't want to speed the version be, because there is huge risk, and I, I'm seeing few uh, such practice in community. So we decide, and this one is, um, we cannot afford the uh, failure or disaster, so we decide go with version by version. And we hope it can be a rolling upgrade, which means a piece by piece, we upgrade one service by one service to see if there is some problem. If we meet some uh, disaster, we can roll back quickly. And to reduce the risk, we only upgrade the OpenStack services. We do not upgrade uh, database, o, uh, OS, or uh, other, uh, or even staff. We cannot. We don't want to do the whole things at one time. So, what's the right timing for the uh, upgrade? In theory, we should, uh, based on our monitor data, and find our proper time. Uh, but. When we actually do the upgrade, uh, we do not uh, do not use the monitor data. We just uh, we see we are based on our practice. We know the VM we are, is not going to have downtime. Only a few downtime on, on the OpenStack API. So we 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 just apply a maintenance window for our uh, this API and uh, and do not send notice to the customer who are using the VM because. After our proper testing, we found the VM is not going to have downtime. And the long-term strategy, after this first time upgrade in our production, we decided to uh, follow the uh, community steps, upgrade version by uh, each bit release. So the long-term strategy. The road uh, to rolling upgrade, I think uh, it, that contain a lot of things. 
and it's a role to build the confidence of you. And at the beginning, I proposed uh, our team to do the rolling upgrade. Teammates, they are af very afraid, uh, fear about these things because they do not have confidence. So I set up different, set up two goals in the, uh, before we rolling upgrade the uh, production environment. First one is the VM environment. The second one is the beta environment. I encourage our teammates who are working on this area, they first of all, they all have to finish the rolling upgrade in the VM environment, build the confidence, and do some research and uh, practice. And the main purpose of VM environment is to uh, come up with our new local repository, new uh, come up with the uh, config file changes, and verify the basic uh, upgrade procedure. But there is some uh, drawback of the VM environment because, as I mentioned, we use VLAN in, in the, uh, our production environment, but in VM environment, we cannot create the uh, VLAN mode in the VM. So we go to the another uh, steps is the beta environment. We verify the local repo we get from the VM and refine the upgrade, uh, upgrade procedure in similar topology and architecture as our production environment. However, there's, uh, like the, we do not have the same size of database uh, in our uh, beta environment as production, and we do not have so many uh, have uh, different tiers of storage in a beta environment. So uh, that is some uh, things we ha actually have to do in the production environment. So we take about um, four weeks to go through all these uh, steps from VM environment to actually successfully uh, upgrade our production environment. Also, we should come up with some plans during this road. First one is the roadmap plan. I think uh, 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 each upgrade should have a roadmap plan, but we better do not roll back in our production environment because we don't want to see some uh, unexpected issues, right? And, uh, but we do, do need to try the rollback in, uh, plan in our beta environment or VM environment to make sure we have the ability to roll back to a pre-upgrade state. If something fails and we do not figure out, we should bring up the, uh, the services as soon as possible. Do not want to uh, exist the uh, maintenance window. How to roll back? We should probably uh, back up the database, configure fire, and uh, repository. And then you just to, uh, restore these things to the environment is, is done. So, after we have several tests of this uh, rollback plan. It's um, very easy. And validation plan. Uh, there is a question, is how, how do you verify your cluster is working fine with, uh, up, after the upgrade? At the beginning, we want to try the uh, Congress. Congress is uh, a framework to capture the cloud status. And he is actually, he is an um, open policy framework for the cloud. And to fulfill this task, he will collect the cloud status. And we want to leverage this capability of Congress. But what pity, eventually we do not use Congress. And because he, uh, he this project didn't meet our requirement because, for example, he didn't gather all the tables of the project, for example, he mix some tables in Keystone, and um, he only store the data in the memory and it change according to the status of the cloud change. So we, we cannot easily get this result and diff different uh, after we upgrade. So we choose another option. We uh, manually write some scripts to collect the data from the cloud through OpenStack API and diff this di uh, result after uh, after the uh, upgrade. We do the validation plan, uh, validation scripts uh, after we upgrade each, uh, each services. So we have all the plan scripts in hand. The next thing is uh, how to automation 
and upgrade some nodes by sequence. Upgrade is, uh, the sequence matters. And uh, another important thing is the config file matters. Havana and Ice House, there is some few cha changes in some config file. We should update the config file items according to the version changed. And we should uh, understand, clearly understand uh, which service has what kind of changes. We should update our uh, template in our public code. And in our uh, beta environment testing and VM environment testing, we met a lot of issues on some uh, uh, config file change. So we come up with an uh, idea. It's, if bad, it's best if, if we have some uh, config file conver converter. It can get the input of our previous config file. And after this program, he can output a new version of the uh, config file with the correct value set up in the uh, co uh, config file. We have this proposal, and we have to do a little work on it. But unfortunately, we do not finish it by today. So we st still manually change the uh, config file. But I think this is maybe uh, the community can work on in the future, the uh, config file converter from one version to another version. And how to uh, up automatically upgrade multi nodes? We leverage our local uh, a CI system, just like the diagram show, we have our everything in local code, uh, repo and pipe. And we update this, replace the old version, and the puppet master, he will get these things and deploy to our new, uh, comp uh, new uh, deploy to the, uh, for example, controller and install the new code and update the config file. So I do it by, we upgrade the cluster by this way. But there is some drawback in the puppet. For example, it's not easy for, for us to control the sequence of nodes. So uh, we, we, we look at the uh, Ansible. We think Ansible is a, uh, it's a nice tool to help us to, consider, uh, to control th this kind of sequence. So we combine this uh, puppet and Ansible together to do the automation. So we go to, uh, after this whole preparation, we actually we can uh, go to the, the uh, production environment and do the rolling upgrade. And we prepare, the preparation is that we should back up all the things, including config file, database, and build the uh, log Icehouse local repository in our uh, server to have Puppy can get these new things. And another, the last thing is very important. Just remember to stop the uh, puppy agent in the cluster. We, met, we run into this trouble in our beta environment. We successful upgrade the uh, some nodes, but we forget to turn off our puppy uh, agent. And he, he will override our upgrade to, to the uh, uh, Havana version. And if you use other tools to manage your the configuration of your cluster, just remember to turn off them. And then the sequence is uh, we upgrade, we choose the controller one as the uh, nodes to upgrade and keep the controller two as uh, uh, it, because we have the age, uh, load bands bet, uh, in this uh, controller one and controller two, we can just stop the services in controller one and have the um, API request can through uh, can still go through the uh, controller two. At the same time, the controller two can still add us a uh, backup nodes to. Uh, and then we uh, upgrade the uh, the services in controller one and bring up the services and shut down some services in controller two. After finish the uh, API con uh, open stack API uh, controller API update, we upgrade the. Uh, Compute nodes with the uh, neutral Nova Cinder services. What's the general pro uh, update process for each project? That is very s simple, I think. First of all, you upgrade, update the config file to new version, stop the old services, and uninstall the new code. Make sure uninstall the new code. 
and install the new code, do the DB sync. Uh, for for Neutron, the DB sync you have is a little complicated, but you have but uh, when you follow the it's different from other projects, you should do the stamp in the deep, when you do the db before you do the db sync and then start the new services where it verify if it all works well this pro uh, process is works for each project so i have a uh, uh, a uh, uh, diagram to show you the sequence of the uh, API status changed. First of all, we, sh as I said, shut down all the services in uh, controller one, and then we uh, bring up the uh, keystone. We upgrade the keystone, bring up the keystone services in controller one, shut down the, in the uh, controller two. So that the only downtime for the API services is only when you uh, sync the database change the database schema. And during all these upgrade, there is no impact to VM. And then glance, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, it's done. Then you get a ice house controller. So next, uh, Lin will help, help to present the detailed steps of uh, each upgrade, and he will also share the uh, surprise we made with you guys. Okay, thanks, <coughs> Okay, uh, then I will talk about more details about what we did in our upgrade. So basically, step by step. Yeah, it's maybe a little boring for someone who already done this work. Um, okay, let's do it. So for stuff out for the Kingston. Uh, actually, as Su Chen said, what we need to do is to modify the configurations and then stop the service and do the cleanup, like the uninstall the code and the Python Kingston client, and then do the ins install the new Ice House package and uh, do the DB sync, and then that's how you can start uh, the new services. Kingston is pretty simple, and the uh, glance is the same. Um, but uh, before upgrade the uh, glance, the one thing you have to do is to convert the character set for UTFA, and then it's the same to modify the configurations and uh, to stop service and do the clean up. Actually, there's one thing. One mistake we made because sometimes we are lazy, so we forgot to do the clean up for the glance, and uh, then we when we do the validation, such as glance image list, then we get an error like duplicate options in the command line, and then we found out that it because of the old code, I mean the PYC files ex still exist in our. Uh, in our note, so so one thing I want to emphasize: just you ha you must do the clean up and don't be a lazy bone like us. And uh, then you do the DB sync, and uh, you get a new service for the glance. Okay, this is Nova service. Nova service is similar. You just need to modify the configurations. Actually, the one thing I want to say is for the upgrade levels, you can enable this config like computer equal to ice house compatible. That will make you able to use new ice house Nova API to communicate with the old computer host. So it's very convenient and useful. Thanks for community provide this option to us. It will uh, make the RPC API to equal to 3.0, which is compatible for Havana and uh, Ice House. With that, you can run, you can start and date VM as usual. And uh, the rest of things is similar. So to stop the service, 
and do the DB sync and do the clean up. And then you can start a new Ice House Nova API, Nova API services like this. Okay, yeah. New is a little bit difficult complexity because of the ML2 stuffs. So you have to, first of all, you have to convert the character set to UTF-8. And, uh, on, and then you should uh, keep the configuration untouched and uh, do the clean up, code, clean up code and uh, start the new services. And then you sh do the upgrade database, like do the stem and uh, run the ML2 convert script. Actually, we also made a um, low level mistake here. When we're doing the um, when we're making stems, we're using a capital H of Havana instead of the, uh, the small Havana, and uh, which is not recognized by neutral DB manager. So it will try to upgrade the database from Grizzle instead of Havana. Yeah, that's, that's something weird. Maybe we should complain to the community. Uh, and uh, then, after we're doing the DB schema upgrade, so you can modify the configurations. There's also one important thing you should uh, see is for the default uh, plugin configurations. You should uh, change, I mean, it's the 15, yeah, nine, time, yeah, it's time. So you should change the plugin configuration from OpenV switch to ML2. That's very important. And then you can start the Neutron service, Neutron server. That's all for the Neutron server on control node. And uh, then we, we finish our work in control node and uh, we start to work on the network node. So for the neutral agents, like L3 and metadata and uh, open with switch agent. So it's uh, very pretty smooth. So you just uh, uninstall the packages, do the clean up, and uh, modify the configurations. And uh, you should clean the OVS configurations if you use L3 agent. And uh, then you can do the, you can start a new network service and uh, there should, uh, we don't have a problem of network here. And uh, okay, it's Nova Compute. Yeah, this cat is just for fun. It's unlike, <laughs> <laughs> it's unlike Nova, con unlike the Neutron. So we don't have any problem here. It's very simple. You can just need to modify the configurations and uh, then you don't need to do the migrate of VMs if you don't try to upgrade your OS. So just uh, stop the service, use a new config, configurations, and install the new one and start the service. Uh, one thing you should remember, if you, are, if, if you enable the upgrade levels configured in control node, you should uh, comment these options. Okay, that's for the Nova computer host, Nova host. And uh, the last thing, the Cinder. Cinder uh, yeah, is much easier, I think. You don't even need to change the configurations. You just need to do the clean up and uh, install the new Cinder packages and uh, do the DB sync. Uh, but uh, in our case, they are a little bit different because we are using self as our backend. So I mean RDB. So we have a problem here because there are big change for RDB from Havana to S House. They changed the image name, so from the fake ID to a unique ID. So after we finish the upgrade it will give us the error report like could not find the block device. So you have to manually 
uh, change the name in the change the name of image instance in self volumes. And uh, then that's all for our for my part. So back to Su Quan. Thanks. And uh, so we have a kind of smooth upgrades, no downtime for the VMs, and uh, we have um, uh, finished all the uh, API services upgrade within our maintenance window within one hour. And up, uh, the downtime is on actually it's only happen when we upgrade the da database schema. And we also uh, learn a lot during this upgrade. For example, uh, when we do the upgrade from uh, in Neutron, the matter sequence, uh, the sequence matters, and we should take care of the each word in in uh, in the uh, document. And there's some uh, problem we may when we are in the beta environment be, but fortunately they do not happen when we do it in the production, such as the uh, in the uh, the DHCP type port is tagged to uh, forty nine five and. Uh, in, in the DH, uh, CP agent, and we uh, walk around it by disable DHCP in the subnet, and then enable it again. And some uh, happens, uh, some problem will be uh, the VM's uh, device lost, we be uh, BR int, and we should use the OVS command to set the tag back. And uh, another thing is like the uh, uh, we, because we are running the environment for a long time, so some flavor actually is deleted because we uh, because the mechanism of uh, horizon shows us an update in the uh, in the uh, dashboard, so make some mistakes to find out uh, some uh, deleted uh, flavor, and we should look, uh, read the uh, release note very carefully. Just the case uh, Tanlin just mentioned, uh, the RBD driver changed. So it, it will uh, use another name, so we have to uh, rename them. And I think uh, for the community, we also I uh, think we should do, uh, there is a community direction conf community should go. I think you can help to cover this part. Okay. Uh, from our experiences, we can say uh, upgrade tool is deadly reserved. Uh, you should not rely on human beings, truly. We made uh, many mistakes here. So lucky enough, we didn't break our production environment. No blames from customers. And uh, we think even for the Puppet template update, we should use Ansible to do the modifications. Uh, and uh, also, we definitely need uh, to generate uh, proper configurations and uh, to verify it. So I think it's a very worthwhile work we have planned to do it. And uh, the third thing is, uh, we really hope the community will enable live upgrade completely in our project rather than in Nova now. So we also want to contribute more to the community to make uh, the upgrade work is much easier and convenient for all of us. Yes? Okay. And last, I want to thank the uh, teammates working on these upgrades. And these are their names, Meng Chen, Zhang Xin, Tan Ling, Zhou Zhen Zhang, and Jian Tao. So we have a nice picture here. So any questions? Thank you. Uh, can you. Could you please go to the mic? So uh, have you thought how much of this could be applied to moving from, let's say, Ice House to Juno or Juno to Kilo? Have you tried to generalize your approach? I think this is much easier for, uh, this should be much easier than what we did from um, Havana to Ice House because I have seen community has done many works for the live upgrade. And uh, actually, the work for the rolling upgrade is yeah, not much risk. Yeah. And are you also implying that uh, moving from one version to another is a custom uh, process? So basically, you have to adapt it from moving to, let's say, Juno to Kilo. You can't really create a general upgrade service. Mm. Yeah, something like this. 
Hi, I, I got here a few minutes late, so I apologize if you already uh, addressed this. But what kind of workloads are you running on your uh, on your in your environment? Is it more uh, enterprise workloads, or is this research or engineering applications? Uh, actually, majorly it's a uh, uh, DevOps the uh, workload, and w because of the in Intel business, Intel do not is a internet internet company, right? So the customer they are using. Uh, the VM to combine with their hardware uh, to, to do the testing based on the silicon board or some uh, CPU, such kind of things. And also they will put their uh, such like uh, database into our environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do you have the common code base for uh, upgrade uh, for, for both VM and bare metal provisioning and do you, if you have did you face any specific issues with the bare metal explicitly? Mm, can you repeat your question? I yeah, is it the same code point. base used for provisioning the VMs and bare metal? Okay, we we use two different ways for provisioning VMs, we use OpenStack, but we plan, we do some POC for using bare metal like the ironic, but uh, yeah, it's still in process. Okay, thank you. So when you guys did the upgrade and you flipped the load balancer over to the one control node, did yeah. you do that across all the services and then go through and upgrade the services that were basically offline during that period and then flip back? Or yeah. did yes. Okay, yes. so you did, you did the whole stack yes. yes. and then you flipped the load balancer over yes. and then you went through the other side? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, exactly. cool, thanks. So why we do that? Because we want to um, shorten the uh, maintenance window. Great, any other questions? No, thank you guys. Thank you for joining this session.